you know, you got that. So I ended up billing it as an international dream match. So it could be an eight minute match unless somebody's hurt um, and they have to get, you know, through it. So um, it's, I mean, it's funny, like it's out of nowhere. It's um, Independence, Missouri. I mean, it's not like it was Corpus Christi, Texas, or, you know, um, you know, uh, Laredo, Texas, or, or Los Angeles or Fresno or, or, you know, Sacramento or something like that, where you would really want to like do it. But I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, I don't know what it'll mean for ratings, uh, because he, he's a, he's a hardcore wrestling fans name, um, who follows Lucha Libre, which is not enough people to sway ratings. But as far as like a match that will be a great match on television on Wednesday night and make for a great show. Um, it'll probably be that, and certainly the effort will be to be that. And um, I think with the fans in the building, I think the match will probably get over pretty great. Um, I think that enough people have enough buzz on it, and they did a little video feature on the things for tonight. So, um, you know, I think, uh, um, you know, I mean, uh, most of the guys that fall into that category that have come in, you know, Bandito came in and, and tore the house down with Jericho, uh, Takeshita has done really, really well, you know, as far as getting crowd reactions. I mean, they're not big ratings draws yet, but but they've really looked great. And um, Commander in San Francisco, you know, um, wowed the crowd and everything like that. You know, he got over big as far as to the live audience. So these guys, they get over to the crowd, you know, when they come in and do this stuff. But it's, you know, it's like everything else. It takes a while to build to be a player in the eyes of the people who um, are casual viewers and and wins and and I, and you know again and even then you know the finish is, is interesting politically because Vikingo is their world champion i presume you know again that there is um you know i mean the the one thing that this also shows is that um after what happened in december with the the um ftr thing that uh the relations with AAA and with AEW which were frayed very much so at one point coming off of that that they're at least back to working together on things that they need to work together and perhaps i know 100 percent that triple a really wanted this match to headline a triple mania and i you know i mean the logical thing would be to say that um you know if, if you know as a show of good faith we'll you can have the match first and we get a rematch in you know in um, whether it's Monterey, Tijuana, or or Mexico City, um, and do a two match series, so um, it's interesting, you know, what you do. You know, I mean, again, um, but but it it's it's a big match from a political standpoint, and it's a big match to a lot of fans, and and again, could be one of the better matches of the year because Vikingo's that good. Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on this program. What kind of mustache did Vince McMahon have? Well, goddamn! If you had questions about my mustache, you just had to ask! My God, Vince, is that you? Hell yeah, it's me! What are you doing to my chair, kid? Yeah, yeah no, listen, I'm here, everybody, for a moment. You are. Because I know the only thing that anybody cares about is this stupid mustache story. I get a text. He's back, LOL. First, I was told he was snuck into the building. I started getting messages. Dude, he's got a mustache. You ever seen uh, uh, Gomez Adams from the Adams Family? That's what his mustache looked like. And he also had jet black hair. I got a sale to facilitate, so I'm out of here. Shave that thing. Oh my God. Wrestling Observer Live. I went to Rite Aid. Oh, no. And uh, they had, uh, I don't know, that. I think it was by L'Oreal or something like just, that. Just for men. This right. is apparently not to be used to color all of your hair black. Uh-huh. So I got home, and I just... I start running the water through my hair, and, like, I can't even get my fingers through my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I washed my hair like seven, eight times. Until it fell out? Finally, I was like, dude, I got to cut my hair off. This stuff is not coming out. <laughs> I thought I was so clever making fun of him and spoofing his mustache and dyeing my hair black and going in there looking like Vincent Price. And what happens in the end? I end up having to shave my head because of this guy.
I think Vince watches this show every week. He goes into the archives, he watches the Retro Raw, he follows along with us. Okay. And he was watching this show, and he saw Burt Reynolds. Man, he saw Ron and Sheer marking out for this guy, and he was like, that's the secret of mustache. And he went out and got a blonde with big boobs. I don't know about that one. Oh. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.